The brass band is a wonderful and enormous machine. It's a whole world. It's not my world, I just got sucked in. I live near the Scottish Mining Museum and one day I saw all these bands playing outside that museum. Loads of them. And that was my epiphany. That was how all this started for me. I arrived in mining country from the suburbs of England and when I discovered what a number of amazing, amazing musicians were all around me, living all around me, but hidden like the coal, I wanted to get inside that. I wanted to get right inside it. The Brass Band is a series of voices, distinct but similar voices. And like that, it's more like a choir than an orchestra. And this thing runs on systems, little mechanical systems of tubes and valves and musical systems of stage and clefts and seats and desks and bigger societal systems. The brass band has been this shape for about 180 years. And there is social thinking built into the DNA of the brass band, into the sperm and the egg of the brass band, because from before it was born, the impetus was, how can we get as many people playing music together as possible? What a wonderful way to be born. That's not how orchestras were born. Orchestras were born of the whims of superstar composers and the monarchs of Europe who patronized them. And these bands formed around mines, factories. All sorts of centers of industry, but around me, it's about coal mining, so massive, so gone, and it might seem long gone, but it's not. Not really. And with the Scottish Government's decision to pardon a number of people who had been convicted of picketing offences in the 1980s miners' strike, well, mining is back in people's lives because if those convictions get wiped, that will change people's lives again. Dads didn't really want their sons to go down the pit. However, there was high unemployment and couldn't get a job. And so... My dad got me a interview in medical and such like, and I started okay. when I was 17, and, and that's how I ended up in mining. This is Brendan. Brendan was arrested at a picket in Bilston Glen in 1984 and has carried a criminal conviction for 37 years. That's a massive thing. Even though I was not an overtly political person, there was never any doubt that I would support the strike. It was pretty straightforward. We were defending our community, we were defending our jobs. We weren't asking for anything in particular. We, we were fighting against an aggressive right-wing government that was hell-bent in closing down our industry. When the minor strike ended, obviously I couldn't just go back to work like the rest of the men. I couldn't find work. And when I did find work, it was dead-end jobs. And then when they found out who I was, and they would just say, oh, look, there's less work available, we have to pay you off. And it affected my life really negatively because I couldn't find work. And I was watching the world I believed in collapse. First couple of years after the minor strike, I absolutely dragged myself into oblivion. A political situation which has its roots over years and a strike that lasted for a whole year. But Brendan's life changed in a day, in a minute. The day I was arrested, there was quite a bit of disturbance. There were people away at the back who seemed to kind of do a lot more kind of provocative behaviour than was healthy. I was right at the front and I was standing having a conversation like you and I are right now and there was a push from the back and, 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 and I was trapped 
the police line opened up and it closed again and I found myself at the other side. And this young cop grabbed me by the arm, you know, and he's pulling at me. And he was, he was only about 21, 22. He wasn't much older than me. I, I just kind of lifted my arm and was like, let go of me, you know. And he fell, at which point he kind of lost it. And he was like, you're lifted, you know. I was like, yeah, OK. Um, and, and, it, and it was that incident and that day that was responsible for my criminal record, for my dismissal. Brendan is a brilliant writer, which is a gift to an interviewer, because he talks so eloquently about the emotional impact of this environmental situation, and about not having a job, and not having money, and the insecurity that that brings. And I talked to him quite a bit about writing. Writing, I think, has been hugely useful to Brendan. But I didn't write anything about the minor strike. It was obviously somewhere in there there must have been some sort of trauma, you know, something that was just blocking that. And then it all came flooding out. Maybe in some ways, I was one of them. There are actually generations in mining communities of young people who know nothing about this. There was an element of communities stop talking about it, and maybe that's a trauma thing. Maybe that is. But I do believe there was also a massive mental impact on me at the time that I didn't realise until until about 2009. In terms of a mental health journey, I would say my mental health is better than it was. When you meet people who are prepared to talk frankly and openly about their personal situations, there is huge power in that. And when you get a bit of understanding of how a big political situation plays out in the life of one individual, there's enormous power in understanding that too. It becomes like a reality microscope is a way of making the hypothetical real. This is no longer political science when people start talking about their personal darknesses. And you might be thinking, come on, mate. We came to see a brass band gig, the most joyous of all sounds. Lighten up a bit. But there is light in this. Because Brendan has done extraordinary things. Those pickets have been in court for years, for decades. But some things do get addressed. And the things that Brendan's done with his life as a writer, as a youth worker, he helps other people through insecure situations and that unfortunately real life learning 
is what makes him great at doing that. Maybe in some ways, I was one of the lucky ones. I was young enough to reinvent myself. I, you know, eventually went to university. I'm doing all right. But the overall injustice is a much worse thing. And it's, you've never been involved in any incidents before and you got a criminal record. Every single time I've went for a job, every single time I've had to fill in my disclosure form, I've had to say I had a criminal record. Close the pits by all means, but create other jobs, retrain people. You know, it's people we're dealing with. Basically, they came up with these convictions are not safe, and, and, and I think that's right. But I mean, what, they, what they were doing was redressing an injustice. So, so it, was, it was good that this was taken up, and it's great that after all these years, we'll get our criminal records wiped. That actually is a good feeling. <laughs>